Are we good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This message is called On Prayer. This is a message. Um, I know we're like family. God speaks to us. Oftentimes we have words for each other, you know? Um, you know, brother, you always give a, a good word in season, how great it is. You know, you always give an encouraging word, a word of proof, a word that, that builds and destroys our flesh. You know, brother, sister, you guys, you always give that encouragement and, and the, the, come on, keep going, keep going. You know, God's got a message for us. We just that sermon jam was called Run or excuse me, the original sermon was called Run for Your Life. It was done the the, the, the Sunday following September eleventh attacks. A call to anguish was done a year later to the day. So Father, I just lift this before you. This is your time. Uh, you told me to talk about prayer. I don't have the first clue. I tried to write down what you shared with me. I am so not qualified to share anything on any of this other than uh, I'm just a brother among brothers and sisters. Holy Spirit, may, your, may you lift up the name of Jesus. Prick our hearts. I don't know what this is about, but I praise you. May your will be done. Now, I just ask, oh God, that you would animate, you would um, shut me up if I say something that is not of you, and <clears throat> move me where it's of you. Lord, your will, your way, your glory, your excellence, your majesty, your kingdom reign, in Jesus' name. And all of God's people say, Amen. 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 Uh, go to Galatians 6 2. Verse 1, actually. Brothers, if someone is caught in any wrongdoing, you who are spiritual should restore such a person with a gentle spirit, watching out for yourselves so you also won't be tempted. I'm going to ask a simple question. Can you do that without prayer? Can you restore someone with a gentle spirit without prayer? Yes or no? Let me answer it for you. The answer is no. You can't do it. You will not do it. In fact, it's not a can't. It's, it's not a shouldn't. You won't. You will not restore them. Let's define prayer. Prayer is communication between you and the Lord. It can take many forms. You can intercede. You can worship, like, like sing. You can praise. You can speak scripture and, 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 uh, and essentially prophesy. Uh, uh, and, and, and David Wilkerson has done that. Uh, others have done that. I've, I've shared, um, you know, where I just go to the trees. I just go out and I just start speaking the scripture and speaking the scripture till I, you know, and, and just weeping and, and brokenness. Um, there, there, there's a, a prayer that, um, you know, the Jews would say that if you are in a, in, in a they call it um, tachnun, the term is tachnun, where you're just in such grief. They say the rule is you're not allowed to fast if you're in tachnun. Because you are in so much grief, you would do what? Add sorrow to sorrow. Okay? Tachnun is an intercession of I'm, I'm undone. I'm undone. There's no strength in me. Okay? There, there are uh, prayers of grief. There's prayers of rejoicing. And, 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 and prayer is can be defined as an attitude or an action. Now, verse 2. 
on prayer. Keep in the back of your mind. God is saying, child, this message for you from this vessel is on prayer. Okay? Carry one another's burdens in this way you fulfill the law of Christ. Jesus did nothing without prayer. And it's not a... Like the, like the Jews would have the Amidah or the Shmon Esre, the 18 prayers. And then later on added the 19th, which was a curse against the Christians. But the point was... It's an attitude of, my heart yearns for the one above me. The one that can do something about it. Uh, shared a message, brother, brother shared a message on from Jonathan Kahn, digging a ditch with a spoon. Okay, you who are spiritual should restore such a person with a gentle spirit if someone's caught in wrongdoing. If you try to do that without prayer, you're digging a ditch with a spoon. There was an incident that happened in Israel about whether I should take a certain job. I told Leanne, honey, we need to pray about this. And I started going into a dialogue, thinking, re uh, rationalizing why I should take this job or not. And she said, wait a minute, stop. You're talking about prayer, but you never once prayed. My head was involved, but not my heart, not my spirit. And I said, honey, oh my goodness. We called it a dental implant moment because the company we were, I was going to potentially work for, they were uh, shipping dental implants. And I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I thought about this out rather than gone to you. And immediately the answer was no. Don't have that dental implant moment. It's very dangerous. We are in a, in, in a time in history, Daniel, where it says that in the end times, two things. One, people will go to and fro. Knowledge shall increase. We are in an explosion of knowledge. Every person has their own opinion. The etymology of the word opinion means this. A judgment call based on the person speaking it. It can even be used in a legal definition. Our Supreme Court justices make opinions. Okay? An opinion, let's face it. I'm sorry guys, you have no opinions. You're slaves of Jesus. Your opinion is irrelevant. Because if you make a judgment, you're gonna be held to that. And then when you're like, Oh shoot, well never mind, I messed up. Where's your credibility? You were looked at as someone that gasped by say divine. Because judgment is reserved to God alone. Jesus in his human state did not judge. He says, I judge no one, I save. He is the judge. On earth he came to save, in the heavens he will judge. Because that's his place now. He sits on the throne, and he's been given the name of Yahweh, the name of above every name, that every knee will bow, because he's the righteous judge, okay? He's the only one who can make the judgment. Our goal, we're here on earth, is pray. I'm gonna tell you this, not a single blessed person in this room, in this house can pray. I can't pray. You can't pray. Nobody can pray. You can't generate prayer. You will not generate prayer. Well, what happens? Lord, please. Lord, please. my dad would call it reading Chinese. <laughs> oh, he's reading Chinese. <laughs> We're told to always pray. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Pray without ceasing. That means you should be praying right now. Right now you should be praying. 
you guys failed, you didn't pray. Why aren't you praying? You didn't pray, that's it, another second. You didn't pray. See there, you didn't pray, you didn't pray. You're thinking, Mary, you're being annoying. Yes. Thanks. Glad to, glad to help. That's the point. It's impossible. The disciples said, Jesus said, excuse me, with man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. What does that mean? That means you need the Holy Spirit to animate you and to get you to pray. If you're not baptized by the Holy Spirit, if, the, if Jesus Christ has not poured fire upon you, burning things in your life, you can't pray. So just stop. Because you're wasting His time. You are wasting time. Until you say, okay, Lord, I can't pray. I can't do it. You got to do this. You got to baptize me. You got to get me on fire because I, I know I'm supposed And I can't get the stinking flesh to do what you want me to do. Save me. That's what he wants to hear. That's what he's waiting for. And watch the fire come. And you find yourself, oh my goodness, it's three hours later. And you've interceded for the whole world. And you still got more. Go to Jude 21. So, bearing one another's burdens. Your prayer is connected. Forget circumstance. Forget what happens to you. Acts 20. Paul says, I... In fact, let, let, let's, let's go to Acts. Let's, sorry to flip on you. Acts 20, verse 24. 22, excuse me. Acts 22. And now I'm on my way to Jerusalem. Bound, uh, uh, chapter 20, verse 22. And now I'm on my way to Jerusalem. Bound in my spirit, or in the spirit... Not knowing what I'll encounter there. So stop right there. He's not concerned about circumstance. But he does it, but he says this. Except that in town after town, what? The Holy Spirit testifies to me that chains and afflictions are waiting for me. So he's ready for whatever comes. God tells him, prepares him beforehand. You're gonna get suffering. You are literally gonna get chains. Some of you who are working certain jobs. You're going to get cussed at. You're going to get treated like dumb. Some are, you know, your mothers. You're going to be dealing with snotty noses, illness, diapers. You got to feed them constantly. You got to start schooling them. It's not going to be what you want. By the way, let me make you sick for a moment, God says. Allow you to get ill. Because, I, because what's in you, I don't like it, and I got to get it out. This is the only way to do it. What do you do? Pray. Holy Spirit, I can't do this. I thank you that you are taking the flesh out of me. Verse 24. But I count my life of no value to myself, so that I may finish my course. And some manuscripts say, with joy. And the ministry I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of God's grace, the good news of God's grace. Your Time in prayer, the Romans 8 groaning in utterings too deep for words, should be centered not on you. Your life should be of no value to yourself. The most important thing to remember as a Christian, let's face it, you are made after the Father's image. And the Father did what he gave. He sacrificed. He sacrificed his own son. Jesus gave his own life. What I do, I see my father do. I gave my life. God gives his life. You better give your life too. Don't pray. But, oh, I gotta... Uh, don't wait for that convenient time of prayer. You pray. <clears throat> regardless of convenience. You gotta get hungry. You better ask the Holy Spirit to make you hungry. Amen? Amen? Because you're not going to get hungry outside of him. Jesus says, you know, David says, I hunger for you. I yearn for you. I get thirsty for you. Are you thirsty? Or you do, do you just have enough to, oh, I just wetted my lips and then I, I'm good. Really? 
go ahead and say that to a, to a man in the Sahara with no well in sight at 110 degrees. Now let's see how thirsty you get. Do you guys understand? We are in the Sahara now. Do you guys understand that your circumstances, you are in the desert now. This is not a paradise. The people you're around are not touristy. They're not there to make you happy. We're not here for playing badminton or table tennis or, you know, air hockey. I mean, don't get me wrong. Those are fun things to do. And we should praise God for those times, which is prayer. But it's got to be a disposition of you. You have to be prayer. You have to be that incense. Which means... Your flesh has got to die. Your desires, what you want, your conveniences, uh-uh, it's got to go. It's got to get out of there. You got to not want the things you want. You got to hate the things that are the oopsies in your life. You can't just say, oh shoot, oh well, and then go right back to the very same issue. It's got to come to the point where you say, I hate this. God, I hate this. Get this out of my life. It's killing me. Good. Now God's going to do something with it. Jude 20. Sorry, not 21. 20. For you, dear friends, as you build yourselves up in the most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, expecting the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ for eternal life. It's good. It's okay. It was perfect time. Sorry, the video just stopped. So, go to Luke 18. Eighteen verse one. Folks, the burning up of one another and fulfilling the law of Christ should be in an attitude of prayer. The desire of God, first and foremost, righteousness on the earth, men's souls, men and women, children. Somebody's a difficult person. Your heart has got to be moved to see beyond what you see. So you got somebody who's just a smart aleck on the job, somebody that's just rebellious and difficult to work with. Don't be like, I'm not dealing with that guy. You better pity him because that person's going to hell. That person is living in hell. They're angry. Your heart should break for them. Your heart should yearn to have them in fellowship with Jesus. Your, your heart should want them to know the Savior, to see goodness and mercy. There are those people around where they're just unappeasable. That's fine. Because your prayers will be a witness against them in the, in the last day. Because at the very least, you'll be able, you will be like in Ezekiel, where God says, I have called you a watchman. You're, you're told to sound the alarm. And if you do not, and that person dies, they'll die in their own sin, but I'll require blood from your hands. I want, your, I want their blood from you because you said nothing. You gave nothing to me. You did not bring their, your, their concern to me. And now I'm holding you responsible. You could have done something. And you sat and you watched. And you let them die. You could have said something. You may have been directed to go tell them something specifically. At the very least, you didn't even give a thought, a heart cry, a tear about that person. God says, I'll write that down. What is in our book of remembrance, Lord? Today, what... what have I failed to do? 
and Lord, teach me that I won't do that again. Where have I failed you? And help me to learn how to do it better. And the army would call it AAR, after action report. Lord, what was good that I may continue? That action. What didn't I do well that I may stop it or modify it? How do I, what do you want me to learn from this? Luke 18, 1. He then told them a parable on the need for them to pray always and not become discouraged. Don't stop praying. Who here has unsaved family members? <laughs> All of us do. Can't say I don't. Oh, can't say I do. You have unsafe family members, your grandparents. Not my family. Extended family included. Extended, oh, okay. Well then, yes, I know. Do not become discouraged. About their unrighteous judge, listen to what the unjust judge says. Will not God grant justice to his elect who cry out to him day and night? Will he delay to help them? I tell you that he will what? Swiftly grant them justice. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find that faith on you? My, um, honor what you're doing. Oh, I just want to take a break and, you know, just not think about anything right now. That's fine. You better, you better be ready for that circumstance. Did God give you that break? Or you're just tired of fighting? Folks, don't give up the fight. It's more difficult to be a Christian than it is to be a serviceman, serviceman or women in the military. You're always on call. You're called to sacrifice and fight no matter what. Even if you're on the bathroom, guess what? You're getting shot at. Mommy! Daddy! I'm gonna puke! Ah! My 40th birthday. God bless him. Oh, steak four in the morning! Grab a plan! And then I get sick on my 40th birthday. We're always on call, we're always fighting. So, where does that leave us? Let me ask you the question. Is your heart groaning? You see a person, how do you feel? Or, oh God, help them, oh God. Does it hurt? Does it hurt? Does your shoulder, do your shoulders hurt? Does your chest hurt? Because you see the pain? That's what prayer is. It's that ache, that groan, that if you don't do something with it, your stomach, you're gonna have indigestion. You're gonna burn up. You can't help it. It's gonna come out just so loudly. Either way, to be just so overcome, where you're like, oh God. If you're in the middle of something, and you're so overcome. Drop what you're doing. Let people think you're foolish. It's worth it. It's worth it. He's worth it all. Because the foolish, you become a fool for Christ. The moment you sign up saying, yes, Jesus, I want you, guess what? You're fool. Why? Because the preaching of the cross is wisdom or foolishness? It's foolishness. It is foolishness. Here on the but it's, it is your salvation. Go ahead and get on your face, get on your knees, lift your hands. Happened to me on, you know, I had a episode of PTSD. I've been healed, by the way. No, I haven't had a single instance since I was healed. Where you just overcome. And the guy's like, do you need an ambulance? No, I'm fine. Crying out to the I'm crying out to Jesus right now. And because of that, he and I, this coworker, he 
He, uh, he's a difficult person, but he and I have a very good... We enjoy each other's company, actually. <laughs> that's God. That's not me. So, Psalm 109. Go to Psalm 109. This be the last... I hope this is reaching home because this is the message that God is trying to communicate that we are not our own. We are to literally be vessels. If God wants to weep through you, weep. If He wants to laugh through you, laugh. If He wants to speak through you, speak. The very thing you don't want to do is probably the thing you ought to do. Now, I know that can be taken wrongly by so many. I'm talking in Christ, in Jesus. Okay, do you guys understand that? The very thing that you're resistant. It's like, let's say you're to... Like, there are times I'm like, God... Bad time for me to weep. Bad time for me to weep. I can't do this right now. He said, son, will you do it? Will I have to go find someone else? Okay. And I'm undone. Lord, I can't get on my knees right now. Lord, I, okay. Here it goes. In the middle of the street. Psalm 109, verse 4. Verse 3. They surround me with hateful words. Okay. Verse 2. For wicked and deceitful mouths open against me. They speak against me with lying tongues. They surround me with hateful words and attack me without a cause. Keep in mind, David was talking about religious people. The wicked are those who take the name of God falsely upon their lips. In return for my love... They accuse me. Um, what translation do you have, Jen? HCSB. HCSB? Yeah, yeah, that's one. Come on. English. Okay, mine says, but I continue to pray, or but I prayer. What does yours say? But I am in prayer. What do you guys have? I give myself to prayer and can't give you. So in the Hebrew, ve'ani tefillah, I prayer. Why why has an I pray for this? It's a it it is a confusing. Passage, uh, translation. But I'll tell you this. This is my personal opinion. Talking about opinions. What I feel, what I, from all, from everything that I've seen so far, and I may get it wrong, I am prayer. I'm a vessel, an instrument, a channel of never-ending, unceasing prayer, where literally flows through me the Spirit of God as a pipeline. For those who are sick and dying, what what do you got in the passion? I will pray until I become prayer itself. Oh, that's good. That's probably one of the, okay, say it nice and loud one more time. I will pray until I become prayer itself. That's a fact. That's that's the anit filah is what it says in the Hebrew. The anit filah. And I am prayer. You're very Existence should be that that living prayer, the very offering, bearing one another's burdens, and so fulfill the instruction of Christ. Jesus walked around, and what he, what happened? He was moved with compassion. He could, he went through the temple, and he was moved with what indignation. Guys, we cannot ignore the things around us. Forget the political situation. Forget the vaccine situation. Forget all those situations. 
I thought the people were in it. We can pray for the circumstances. Fine, fine. I mean, I understand that people have prayed for the Berlin Wall to come down. They did. They most certainly did. I want to suggest, because it had to do with the reunification of people. Not that, you know, it, the wall is a wall. Because look at Korea, they're still having issues. Look at China, they're still having issues. Christians are growing. But the point is, we can pray for these things. Don't lose heart. As Jesus says, Luke 18. But understand that you are to be that vessel of never-ending prayer. And the, and, and the glorious thing is the very thing that you have received just now with all these, uh, with everything that was shared. Don't you dare keep it for yourself. Get out there and spread that. Testify to the gospel of God's grace, as Paul says. Encourage everybody to pray. Don't ever cease in prayer. And pray with others. Encourage others to pray. Your very first statement, if somebody comes to you with a complaint, have you asked Jesus about it and what has happened? Don't start giving them advice until you've asked. I love Paul Gauchi with Back to Eden Gardening. He said like this, let me go ask the Master Gardener. Well, what the Lord has shown me here, what the Lord has done here, prayer is communion with your Father in heaven, with Jesus. He is your Father. He's the everlasting Father, Isaiah says this. And getting his instruction to pass it down. We were supposed to be walking in the garden as an instrument of his will so that every knee will bow. That's our role as believers, is to bear those burdens. The burden of another. Hey man, I got a sick kid. Hey, can I pray with you? You know, I'm having this problem with this person. Hey, can I pray for you? No, man, I'm all right. Well, can I at least, I'll, I'll be praying for you during my day. I really appreciate that, thank you. I'm so sorry. And actually do. I say, hey, can we pray right now? Yeah, that'd, that'd be great. You would be the, listen, this is very important. Do you understand that you are the only representative at that time and space to that person of Jesus Christ? You are Jesus Christ in front of that person, right there in that. Where they don't see you, they see the fingerprint. It's like a gloved hand. They see Jesus. Jesus peeks out through your, the windows of your eyes. And that is our role. That role of prayer has got to be in you, burning in you. Sometimes it's a little flame. Sometimes it consumes you. But it should agonize. And it should bring to action. Bring to completion. Bring to fruit. In, in the secret closet, it's not until the Lord releases you. And to those who have jobs, maybe you need to, I, I'm guilty, I, you know, we need to wake up at a certain point in time where we can spend time with Him. And at times, it's like, Lord, I've tried. He gives you a word, and it's okay. But the point is your heart to be drawn to Him at all times. Let it burn you. Let it consume you. I won't let you go until you bless me, Lord. I'm praying for my mom. I'm praying for my dad. They don't know you, Jesus. Please help. Don't ever lose heart in prayer. You may never see your prayers answered. Someone else will pray for that very same thing. Because that burden is now being spread to others. And the last thing about prayer is encourage others to pray. To get into that closet and get burdened. Don't just keep these, these words to yourself. Encourage others. Guys, we have a high calling. 
We need to encourage others to pray. Encourage others to burden. We need to encourage others to go into the garden and die. As Jesus did, he lifted his head and he prayed. While others fell asleep. Father, I said what you wanted me to say. And I thank you. And I thank you that you're in control. Father, let us not go to sleep. Let us continue doing the works of you who sent us during the day. Well, it's still called day before nighttime comes. Before we sleep the sleep of death here on this earth. Father, once we're gone from this earth, prayer for us is done. Help us, oh God. Uh, we're not going to turn it off yet, man. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I want us to sing a, sing a hymn. Some of you may know it. Sweet hour of prayer. Who knows, who knows that song? Y'all know it? Sweet hour of prayer.
bright flight. This robe of flesh I'll drop and rise to seize the everlasting Christ and shout while passing through the air. Farewell, farewell, sweet hour of prayer. That should be our cry. At the very last thing we say, farewell, sweet hour of prayer. Hello, my Jesus. I'm coming home. Amen. Thank you, Dad.